We've been uh, searching or going through the uh, Sermon on the Mount. So if you have God's Word, I trust that you do. We're going to be in Matthew 6 today. If you do not have, the words will be up on the screen. Well, I tell you what, it's so pleasing to me. Don't you dare walk those babies out of here if they start getting loud. Well, if they're getting stinky, I, yeah, take them, change that part. But if they're getting loud, you let them get loud. Because I remember a day that we were here and it was quiet. We didn't need a microphone. <laughs> we, we, did, we didn't do the TV on the volume, the volume on the TV to go up just to hear the YouTube videos. Remember that? Now, we, Don, Brother Don's got me going out there during the practice to make sure to do sound checks. Are we balanced? And I don't have to touch a TV remote to balance it. So if your babies get loud, that's okay. It's funny, last, yesterday I was out, was out doing something outside and I heard, a, I heard a yay, hey, from across the street. So I waved, waved my hand. That wasn't good enough because my back was turned. Hey! So I hey back. And I hear another, hey! And turn around and my, my buddies from across the street were yelling at me. It's good to see the buddies coming from back. You know, I, I have to call you out too because I called somebody else out when they were coming in during the announcements. But it's good to have the prices here all the way from across the street from the parsonage. I wondered about this one, you know, and I, the, there's, a, there's a, a saying that keeps coming back into my mind. I'm, I, I don't know if, you've, if you know anything about me. I, I have a little bit of sarcasm that runs through my veins, just a small bit. That was sarcastic too, by the way. But they have these things on social media, which I have taken a break from. But it says, tell me you are this without telling me you are this. Tell me you're from Indiana without telling me you're from Indiana. Well, tell me that you're from the South without telling me from you're, you're from the South. And one of those sayings come up and says, bless your heart. <laughs> See, those that are laughing know what bless your heart means. It's nothing good. It is not anything good. Bless your heart. It sounds good, don't it? It sounds so sweet. That's a sarcastic get out of my face with your issues. <laughs> bless your heart. But see, you know, that's exactly what we've been going through for the last, I don't know how many weeks. It's all about the heart and the, and the intention. So our message today is, is titled, Check Your Heart. Check it. Where is your heart? See, Jesus has been pointing throughout this entire sermon, and he is preaching. He is preaching to the multitudes right now where our heart is at, where the motivation of our heart is, how we should approach certain situations. If you have ears, let, you, let them hear. When we pray, when we fast, in your anger, do not sin, but instead of murder, think about the anger that leads to murder. It's all about the intent. Today, it's about where our heart is. Then I'm going to encourage you to stand for the reading of God's word, Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Reading it out of NIV. Go ahead, stand up at home. I know I'm, I'm waiting. I'm watching on you. I, I can. You're still sitting on your couch. Go ahead. Yep, everyone's laughing at you, not with you. That's okay. Stand up. Thank you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Say that one again. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. See, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, then your whole body will be full of darkness. And if the light within you is darkness, then how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Allow your word to grow within us. Allow your word to have fruit within our lives that others can see. We do not want to hide your word in our heart. We want our word to be in our heart, but to be alive and seen by those around us. 
Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity we can have to come into your house and to boldly proclaim your word and, and to be able to do it with sound amplification. So, Lord, allow us to, with that same amplification, go out into the world today and boldly live your word. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Woo! Treasures. I was thinking about it later on uh, this weekend. I'm thinking I could have easily put two points in this in this church in the sermon, but nah, I'm not going to go back and change everything. Bulletin's printed. PowerPoint's already done. Last thing you want to do to your bride who's doing the PowerPoint is say, "Hey, wait, I, I have this to change to make." Um, no, that's not what you want to do. Um, so treasures. There's. We're going to walk through this and we're going to circle back to some things. I'm going to wait for the circle back to kind of settle in with you. We're going to use that. Earthly treasures versus you know, our heavenly treasures. He talks about what we strive for in life. He says, do not let, lay them up for earthly treasures. We're not to lay them up. We're not to strive for. Too often we find ourselves pushing and prodding for the next best thing. You know, I, I, I don't have my phone on me. Ellie has it, but uh, iPhones are contentious about this, right? Man, we're up to iPhone 74 now, right? Something like that. They, 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 they came up with the iPhone and the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8S and the iPhone 8C or 10C or 10X or 10XI. I don't know where they're at, but every time a new iPhone comes out, we all know that one person in life is standing in line for an iPhone. Yet they just got their one that's in their hand six months ago. Why is it that we strive for things? Uh, we're also we're just as bad with cars. I don't I don't see it as much around here. I used to see it a lot in Pensacola. Boy, those two year leases were possible. They were extremely um, popular. Um, we have a fairly newer car, but man, you should have seen the car that we used to have. And that's what we do. That's what we as a family do. I know a lot of folks here do the same thing. We, we let that car run itself into the ground, and then we go out and get the, get the new one. But man, do you ever see, I don't know if you all used to see, if you remember the Xterra. You could hear it coming a mile away. It's kind of like caller ID. The pastor's calling. If the pastor was in within a mile, oh, here comes pastor. <laughs> you could hear that thing coming from a mile away. But yet we have a lot of folks that like to strive after that new car. What's that new thing? We have someone here that used to sell cars. I'm sure they, they saw this on, a, on, a, on the daily. Are well, they bringing a brand new car, not a dent, not a scratch on it? Everything works? Oh, but it's not the newest. This new one's got, you know, the, I can plug my iPhone in and I can do everything from my iPhone right from the screen. Because that's exactly what we need to do, right? Everything on our iPhone, on the screen, on the, instead of driving. You ever notice how that just doesn't make sense? But it breaks down. See, the word is, is, is telling it, and this word was just written last week, right? Where dust, dust breaks down. Time breaks down. So the scripture is clear what happens to all of it. Time itself will outdate it. You ever, I don't know, when I first got here, the, the, the faucet in the men's bathroom was, was about a trickle. I took the little filter off and a little faucet head and I soaked it in CLR for a good night or two. It has pressure now. See, that's what happens over time. It deteriorates. It takes away the quality of the th stuff that we chase after. The stuff that we chase is temporary, no matter what it is. My wife saw a meme that she had to share with me this week, and it was a picture of an old refrigerator. And it's those old refrigerators that last through years and years and years. These new refrigerators now, you got to buy them once every couple of years. They break down, you got to replace something. But those old, I'm going to call it snot green, that's a very theological term, <laughs> snot green refrigerator. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Don't go moving. That that fridge does not move, though. It, it's heavy. It stays where it's at. That's why people didn't move back then. They didn't want to move the refrigerator. Forget moving that refrigerator, but nowadays things break down. But even those quality things get replaced. This is not new news. This is not a New Testament issue. Proverbs 23, 4 and 5, it says, Do not weary yourself to gain wealth. See, when you set your eyes on it, it's gone. You want to know, you want to have a conversation with somebody who used to chase wealth, come and sit and chat with me in my office anytime. 
See, wealth is so unfulfilling. Had it. Do you gotta be happy? No, it's I'm not. Because it's always about what I didn't have. Do not worry yourself to gain wealth. It will not be you'll not be satisfied with money. Woo, that's Ecclesiastes 5:10. He who loves it will not be satisfied with it. I'm just preaching myself here. It's not y'all just here for the long for the ride, right? Proverbs 11:20 says, "says He who puts his trust in riches will fail." Man, that hurts. He who puts his trust in riches will fail. But it's not just about money, though. What about a, I'm a good person. Look at all the likes I get on social media. I put my trust in, in how to gauge my, per, my personal success all on the social media. I'll tell you what, it's been a, I've written a blog post. I'm waiting for to, to publish it. I've done some other writing that I would have never written in my time away from social media. I look at it through the, through the church only. So I, I have it, I actually took it off my phone, and I, but I had it on the iPad that stays here in the church. So as I go to give the Bible study on Wednesday, I realize I can't see what you comments because I don't have it on my phone. So I had to download it again. But I realized that I didn't care about the notifications after a while. They don't really justify it and give us just a, a definition of a value. So he does say, what does what should we look for? Our heavenly treasures. What does heavenly treasures mean? Struggled with that. That was a picture I, I forgot to find, and I had, I had put it in the social media many years ago. Um, it was a picture of a hearse towing a U-Haul. <laughs> they, they tell you, you can't take it all with you. Well, yeah, I begged it there for this guy tried to. Had a U-Haul trailer hooked up right to that hearse. But I'm wondering, what does treasures in heaven mean? And it's it's those treasures that you do take with you. See, Dr. Potts, he said, uh, he made this comment way back that's really impressed on my mind. I've, I've referred to it a few times. He says, the only thing you can take to heaven are your kids. While it's not entirely true, I see where he was going with it. See, the only thing that matters, the only earth, the only heavenly treasure we should be searching for are souls. Now we can, I have a certain mark I can put on my daughter's life while she's with me. But sooner or later, she's going to fly the coop and make up her own mind. I can't physically take her to heaven with me. And she knows that she's at that age of accountability. But those of you with littles, this is the time that they have. This is the time that you have to implement. Those of, those of you with teenagers, I'm even talking to my neighbors across the street. Our time is running short with what we can teach our children. See, when they live their own life, they'll make their own decisions. And there'll come a point where you may not like their decisions, but you just kind of have to sit there and be quiet and let them make their own decisions. But see, that is the only heavenly treasure. Store up your things where moth cannot des destroy. See, and I'm wondering, well, where does that say it in the, in, in the scripture? That's just a, that's a, great, that's a great opinion, Pastor. Jennifer, Genesis 1.26 tells us that man was made for everything else. If we look at the first chapter of, the, of this book that we, that we look to every single week, and it tells us everything that was created. It was all created for man. God says, look, I have given you dominion over everything. Name it. Harvest it. There's one tree I want you to leave alone. But everything else is yours. See, that one tree was just for obedience, but that's a whole other sermon. Everything else was yours. There was no work involved with harvesting. There was no toil. There was no heartache. Um, I would think there was no humidity. <laughs> But see, Genesis tells us that everything was created for life. So John 3.16 says, whoever believes in him will have social media everlasting, right? Uh, it doesn't work that way. We will have Chevrolet everlasting. No, we know that doesn't happen. We'll have Ford everlasting. No, that doesn't happen either. 
Nothing is everlasting. It's meant to have life everlasting. Where is our heavenly treasures? It's life. Not the life we live here. Life everlasting. I look around and we, I can, we can point out a lot of problems we have with our physical lives here. But see, life everlasting has no problems. What a treasure it is. James 1.12 says the treasures, the crown of life is the treasure. The crown of life is eternal given by God. So the only thing that's given to us by the Lord is eternal he didn't make that car out there. He sure didn't make that social media profile. See, it's a prize. It's a gift. So what should we, what, what we do should point to what really matters in our life. I'm sure there's a, there's a, there are things that we need to do to pay the bills. We can't all be missionaries or pastors, not can we? But what we, what consumes our mind should point us to that heavenly treasure. See, where our heart is, our treasure will be also. I mean, these, Jesus is forecasting the bold truth that's go, going to come, and we're going to circle back to that truth. We're going, to, we're going to put that heart to the side for a moment. See, how do we get to the heart? It's through what we see. See, the eye is a lamp. It's a window. Jesus was extremely thick with this one. When he's talking about how the eye is a lamp to our soul, it's everything. It's the direction in which we go. You know, there's a, I don't know if you guys have watched the, the, the Olympics. I didn't, but I like to watch the shorts because I don't have the attention span anymore. Uh, but the shorts, who was a Swedish pole vaulter. She had her eye sight fixed on, that, on that, that long bar that was way up. And she's got her, she's got her vaulting or pole or whatever you want to call it. But see, she never took her eyes off that. So the eye is the window in which we're, where we're going. What are your eyes seeing, literally and figuratively? What do we put our eyes on? I think one of the greatest things for this, this little social media break I'm taking is I don't have to worry about the arguments and the fighting, hating this president, hated the last president. I don't have to worry about seeing all that. I think I'm going to fast from news for the next couple of weeks. I might be a little bit happier because see that that stuff that's getting into my eyes is causing to stain in my heart. Again, maybe I'm just preaching to myself. I love this, 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 this line. This is one of those questions that we, they, we ask as interviewers. And I spent a long, long time as an interviewer in business. See, I was the person you had to go talk to before you got the job. Usually the second time. And this whole question, where will you be in five or ten years? And I remember that question asked to me when I was at a, a call center before coming here to Washington. And I chuckled because the, the interviewer was about half my, half my age. Where are you going to be in five years? And I had to say, well, you're not going to like this answer. Well, what do you mean? It's not here. I'm going to be in a church somewhere. I'm, I know for full well that God's not going to make me wait five years. I doubt it'll make me wait six months. How true it was. I had no idea. I hadn't interviewed, hadn't talked to, hadn't, didn't know what Washington, Indiana was at that point. But I told him, I said, I know it's not the answer you want to hear. But I'm going to tell you, no matter how long that I'm here, I'm going to give it all my effort. Why? Because I don't work for you, I work for my Lord. That's well, a little different. It's not what you like to hear, but they want to see where is your sight? Amen. <laughs> uh, don't stop bringing these babies. Please bring these babies. What do we look upon? What do we seek out? What do we see on the TV? Uh oh. We don't want to talk about this. What we consume through our eyes is it adding to the holiness of that God's called us to live. Does it add to His righteousness? What we consume in our eyes. I, you guys chuckled when I said I'm thinking about fast on the news. That's one of the reasons, because I'm telling you what, it's, it's taking a toll on my holiness. It's taking a toll on some of the feelings and emotions that I've had watching the news this week. 
had an opportunity to have a, a Bible study with, a, with another brother who happens to be a veteran, and we see a lot of things the same way. And, and I told him, I said, I might have to go dark for a while because I, I, I'm getting angry. And that's not righteous anger, people. It's not righteousness or holiness that I'm thinking or feeling just by watching the news. But how did it get into my mind? My eyes are the window to my soul. So he, yes, he talked about it, our eyes, for a couple of, for a couple of statements here. See, what we want to look in, into is what our eye is going to consume. What are we allowing our eyes to, to focus into? What are we allowing our eyes to see? See, if we look to consume nothing but holiness in our eyes, wouldn't that translate to our heart? Doesn't mean that everything's going to be peachy, but it does mean that you'll be able to have your heart break for what breaks his. You'll be able to walk through the darkest hours with people that you absolutely love, and it will be sincere. Because see, the people that are walking through the darkness, they don't see their darkness, they'll see your glow, they'll see your glow from the Holy Spirit. I don't know about it. I don't think they make them anymore, but I, when I was a kid, we had a little glow over. Remember those little glow rooms you press them and they, they glow up? See, I used to love my glow worms. My nephews and nieces, when they were kids, had glow worms. My daughter, even I think she even had a glow worm. They hold it tight. See, when people are going through a dark time, they're going to be attracted to those that glow. And where do we guard glow come from, except from where our eye, what we allow in our eyes? The second thing is what we serve. So what we can cultivate, what we see cultivates into what we do. What is seen starts in our eye, the window to our soul, the window to our heart. See how we're kind of circling around and back, back to the heart? Allows the fruit to come of harvest. See, the service we give with our hands and feet all starts with what we're allowing in our eyes. See, as I'm on the negative side of that, as I'm watching some of the news and some of the anger builds up, what I want to do with my hands and feet are not nice things. They're not righteous things. See, the service we have is in the original text. Jesus says, "You cannot serve God or man and mammon." Now, there's there's a lot of ways to look at that term. It is mainly financial. You can't serve money. Now, again, we, we look at the stuff that iPhone is bought with money. So we work for that iPhone. We work for that car. You ever know somebody that is in a house and it was, I don't know, uh, 10 years ago during the mortgage crisis where everybody was upside down on their homes because they allowed somebody in a suit to talk them into a mortgage that was way too much for them? Or these things called balloons. They work for that house. They work for that piece of property. That's no different than serving a dollar. I've been in churches where they serve the dollar. May not be the love of money, but man, they love that mortgage. I'm so glad we have people on our board that says no mortgages for us. It makes things a little bit more challenging because we have to fundraise. But we don't have to serve a mortgage. Remember that Swedish pole vaulter I was telling you about? She had her eyes fixed on that, old, up, that pole up, up top. And her actions were to run at it with her pole, except the first time that pole broke. And she came crashing down, and boy, did her head almost echo. And you heard the oof throughout the auditorium. That didn't stop her. See, her eyes were fixed on that goal. So much that she got up to, I'm good. I'm good. She goes back and gets another pole and breaks the record. I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to break records. But what is that pole that you're, that you're gazing upon? What is that sight that you're gazing upon? We can't serve God and money. We end up loving one and hating the other. What is it that we serve? 
What are we striving for? It would be a great possibility, a time for me to pass the plate and say, hey, guess what? We're, 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 we're looking to, to go out into the community. We're looking for a new sign. We're going to probably, in, in the future, have a brand new building. But no, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to ask you, though, one of those things that I brought it up, I think, last week or week before. Pastor was preached a, a sermon that I was listening to. He goes, I'll tell you where your heart's at. Let me see your checkbook. Now, if we all, it's not about the amount of money that we spend. Because nobody spends more than a car payment or a house payment in tithe. Rarely. What's that first thing that gets taken out? You get paid. You know that first thing that comes out of the checkbook? What's that first thing? See, God didn't say, I want all of your fruits, because it's all his to begin with. I want your first fruits. I want the best that you can give. So I wonder, where is our heart? You can look at it by looking at your checkbook or your online statement. I guess they do those now. Don't know that. It's not about what percentage. But what's things constant every single time? What we love. What do you love? Where are your efforts focused? Where we are focused illustrates the motivation of our hearts. I'm going to say that again. Where we are focused it illustrates the motivation of our hearts. Check your hearts, friends. First John, if you're taking notes, chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. Chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. See, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life come, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Again, that life everlasting. John knew what it meant to have that heavenly treasure line in line. He also mentioned the eyes and what we did with our time. See, we may observe with exact, we may observe with what exact propriety of our Lord places on the purity of emotion, of intention, between worldly desires and worldly cares, either of which directly tend to destroy it. See, if your eye is single, singly fixed on God in heaven, your eye needs to be fixed strictly on God in heaven, on your trek, on your salvation. Yes, we have a we have a duty as parents to to disciple our kids, disciple our grandkids. But sooner or later, they're going to have to take their own eye and fix it towards heaven. Singly fix on God in heaven. If, if we fix our eye on heaven, our whole soul will be filled with holiness and happiness. John Wesley stated that. What the eye is to the body is the intention is to the soul. What the eye is to the body is the intention to our soul. Where we get, get take our eyes. What what gathers our attention? See, I, I, I'm taking a break from the social because I do this all the time. I scroll. I might throw a picture of barbecue up there for the barbecue circles that I'm a part of, but then I scroll. It's taking up too much of my time. What takes up your time? It's gonna might step on some tolls, but I'm gonna tell you, no, no matter what happens, it's 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is not gonna affect your life here in Washington, Indiana. Because what happened there 20 years ago didn't affect my life here or wherever I was standing. What happened two years ago didn't affect my life here. Is there any notification or TikTok? video or that will affect her eternity? No, not quite. Is there a status or meaning that affects it? What about the news? Does the news affect your eternity? Life everlasting? I don't know about y'all, but I can't find anywhere where CNN or Fox News is in this word. None, none, neither one of those media outlets will affect your eternity. I know that there are a bunch of house churches right now in Afghanistan. They're not watching the news. 
And they're on their knees praying quietly, passionately. Those that still have Bibles are probably memorizing right now. You know that's how they did it in China? They memorized Scripture. And when they would get locked up, they'd like, they, they write it down on every scrap paper they, piece of paper they could find. The whole Gospel of John, the whole Gospel of Mark, the whole letter of 1 Corinthians, whatever it is that they memorized, and they get with their circles of Christian prisoners, well, what do you have? Men? I've got Mark. Oh, I've got John. You want to swap? You think that's not what they're doing in Afghanistan right now? As, they, as rumors of, of the Taliban are, are searching phones to make sure that you don't have the Bible app on their phone, you think they're not doing it to memorize? Because they know that you can't delete it from here, can you? You can't delete it from here. What consumes our thoughts and attention now will determine our e eternity. I want us to meditate on that this week. What consumes your thoughts and and attentions now will determine where you spend eternity. It doesn't mean you quit your job and volunteer at the church. And I will take volunteers all day long. Look around. we got lots of work to do. I want to, give, we want to make sure we, we tell John Summers, thank you for the, for the lights. He changed some ballots. You notice they're not flickering anymore? Isn't that great? The lawn looks great. So if you, want to, if you want to volunteer, we've got lots of projects around the church. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you need to quit your job. But I do need, I'm do, I am encouraging you to filter what you allow into your eye. Because what you allow into your eye leads to your actions. Leads to what you do in service. Where you spend your motivation, where you spend your thoughts will determine your eternity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Oh, how your word is runs true. We're asking, Father, that you allow us and search us today for those things that we allow that come into our eyesight. May we focus our eye on things that are holy. May we filter what, what we allow to come through our eye and into our heart. That eye as a window is, is, is so compact with, with meaning, both literal and figuratively. Lord, help us to not only literally protect what our eyes see. I remember that song as a child, Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little eyes what you see. For our Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful little eyes what you see. Father, help us to see nothing but what you would want us to see. Instead of seeing the, the distraught and the chaos of the news, help us to see those Afghani Christians on their knees in prayer in their living rooms. Help us to intercede on their behalf. Instead of seeing the chaos and destruction and lives lost, help us to see the mourning souls of those family members that are mourning the losses of their service members. Help us to see the, the, those that are lost their lives is just because they were standing near a gate hoping for freedom. Help us to intercede for them. Instead of seeing the chaos of the political realms that we live in, Lord, help us to see the broken souls that are serving us in Washington, D.C. If we as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ, all prayed for our leaders, what would happen? to their hearts. Lord, we know that you soften the heart of Pharaoh once. You're in the business of doing the impossible. All because of what we allowed it and to come through our eyes. Filter our thoughts. Allow us to focus on you. Allow us to see what we need to see as far as the eternal treasures. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's kids said, amen and amen. I'm going to challenge you this week as I do every week. Filter what you see. If it brings anger, cut it off. Change the channel. Unsubscribe. Unfollow, except for the church. Don't ever unfollow the church. 
filter what you see in your eyes. Man, there's a lot of negativity out there. But you know what I'm focused, focused on? I'm focused on a church that's a whole lot more full than it was when I first started. And the five or six people that are sitting in these pews can say, yeah, buddy. See, in the world that's in chaos, God's moving in this, in this congregation. God's moving every time I see Edna in the back. Every time I see Dee back there smiling. God's moving when I get to see my neighbors from across the street come through the back doors. Don't tell me my God is ignoring us. Filter what you see. Know that I love you, know that I'm praying for you, and until next week, have a great rest of the week.